Okay, so um, thank you, Wukash, for that fantastic talk. Really uh, enjoyed that, and um, you know, particularly liked how you made the code available, so uh, you know, folks can go and and try it for themselves. Um, and yeah, I just thought you made you know complex concepts really clear. So I, I love it when talks do that. Um, you know, maybe just just. Share, share a little bit of your, your background and tell me how you, you know, you got into this topic and, um, you know, what was, what, what made it so interesting for you? Oh, sure. Um, so first of all, thanks for having me and how I got into this topic. Uh, basically, I'm working with uh, server-side software and backend systems my whole IT career. And around five years ago, I got into the Kubernetes ecosystem and as you can imagine, when talking with customers, uh, many of them during their cloud native journey run into the same set of problems. And observability is amongst the most frequent, most requested ones. So that's how I started to like explore the area on my own and try to figure out what we as a company can offer to our customers that makes sense to cover their needs, but still not lock them in. So in the, in the open source ecosystem. Right, and and in your experience working with customers, you know what what's the adopt adoption of these observability technologies actually look like in the real world today? Because it's it's one thing to see great demos, but like what people actually have deployed can sometimes lag, <laughs> like what we talk about. Um, where, where are people actually at today? The lag is definitely there. I would say. Um, you know, observability is like what I tried to show also in my talk is many things, right? You can you can get different multiple data sources. And obviously things like logs are with us from the very beginning, from the stone age of IT, right? We have logs, everyone's doing yeah. logs. Metrics, basically the same. For multiple years, everyone was doing some metrics because after all, you need to be alerted, you need to carry the pager and you need to be paged. So yeah, metrics are there, although... Um, in, in the cloud native world, Prometheus is the de facto standard and everyone is using Prometheus and metrics means Prometheus. Out of the three main data sources, definitely tracing is the new kit on the block. And from my experience, from customers that I worked with, some of them are already interested. Some of them are actively pursuing it and trying to build um, some kind of POCs and try to figure out how to include um, traces as the as the observability data source, but actually none of them runs that in production yet. Right. And do, do you think that the whole transition that we have with open census, open tracing, going to open telemetry, I mean, did that cause like a bit of a delay in uptake in the market as people waited for open telemetry to mature? Maybe a bit, but I think that the whole area, the whole idea is still pretty fresh. And companies don't have much experience using that. So they don't also know what to expect, really, uh, what, what you know specific outcomes they can expect when they implement tracing. Because logs and metrics, everyone knows. Everyone knows yeah. what this gives to you and how do you use them. Yeah. Traces are still pretty new. So uh, definitely the merger may be delayed things, but I think if at all, then only slightly. And it's yeah, definitely so a great thing that those two two ideas, two projects merge, and that we now have a single standard for that. Yeah, and and I mean, from your experience now, would you say Open Telemetry is ready for production usage for for traces? I think that the main components are there, but for example, with with the demo software I was doing, I was trying to reuse as much libraries as they are ready, so not to you know open the the open doors. And this is still lagging behind just a bit. So the core components, I think they are there. Some things specific, for example, to, I don't know, how you handle webhooks in uh, Go or something like that. Some of them still need to be ported, especially if you're using a specific web framework or something like that. Support might not be there yet. Uh, but I think around the core, comp core components, yeah, it's, it's ready. Yeah, I, I don't know if you know, but our, our team at Kinfolk actually did quite a bit of the development of the Golang library. So 
if you've got some questions, <laughs> you know, have, sure. a, have a chat to some of our folks. Um, um, Shushimir on our team is is actually the I, I just checked he's like the third highest committer on the on the project. So, okay, or on the GoLang uh, piece. Um, so, so um, you know, you're you're with Giant Swarm. Um, Giant Swarm offer, is in the business of offering you know, manage Kubernetes to users. So if I, if I sign up with Giant Swarm, do I get this whole stack like automatically provisioned for me? Is do you kind of give people a, a, you know, a starting point to, to use these tools? It's not automatically provisioned. So by definition, you get a pretty much vanilla Kubernetes cluster, but it is opt-in. So if you want to use this observability stack, this, this set of tools, you contact one of our um, solution architects, and they will help you get started. They will get you on the way and help you deploy, configure everything. Right. Okay. Okay. Good. But so you'll you'll help people get there. Um, and on the subject of uh, giant swarm, it seems you know it's that time of year when we see pictures of a lot of people on a beach in a sunny place. <laughs> Saying this is our twice yearly offsite, and everyone's like, "Damn, I want to work at Giant Swarm." <laughs> so yes, tell, let's, let's tell us what happened in Croatia. Join the company. <laughs> oh yes, we we just got back. Like uh, today is uh, Thursday, and on Friday I got back from Croatia from our most recent onsite. It was really great. It was sunny, although it was also a bit windy. So sometimes people were looking for blankets and hoodies, things like that. Uh, but still, yes, those, those pictures are real. I mean, yes, we are working there, but we're also having a ton of fun. So yes, those pictures are real and really, really enjoyable events. Hey, windy is good for sailing though, right? Oh, but the weather, uh, like no, too windy. windy is good <laughs> for sailing, but also you would expect a bit warmer water and that wasn't the case. Okay, I, I, I was wondering uh, if Henning got thrown in the water. I don't think so. No, I haven't seen them, so. but I, yeah, but there were two battery powered water guns and everyone got splashed from one or the other. Nice. Well, I, I love that um, the team has fun uh, doing what they're doing and, it, you know, that kind of shows through and it shows through in the demo and everything like you, you enjoy that, not just the team, but the technology and, um, you know, really appreciate you sharing the story and, um, you know, I hope you get a, a very nice free sandwich uh, somewhere along the, along the journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, th thank you, Wukash, and um, we'll uh, get on with the rest of Rejects. Thank you very much. Yep, good to see you. Thanks to Microsoft Azure and Equinix Metal for supporting us at the champion level. We also want to thank Red Hat and Slim.ai for funding us at our supporter level.